Welcome to Good Life. I'm Dean Wilson. So glad you've joined us today. I have a special guest uh, who's very impactful in the Santa Barbara community. Mabel Tortoledo is with me from the Turner Foundation. Stay tuned. The Good Life is next. Good Life, I'm Dean Wilson. I'm so glad you joined us today. Just a reminder, you can always see all the interviews from our programs at goodlifetelevision.org. Uh, we're glad you're joining us wherever you are. Uh, welcome. And I want to welcome my guest today, uh, Mavel Tortoledo. Yes. <laughs> worked on the pronunciation <laughs> all morning. Uh, Mavel, welcome. Uh, Mavel is a wonderful person, and Mavel is the director of uh, the Community Learning Centers uh, for the Turner Foundation. The Turner Foundation, for those of you who don't know, uh, here in Santa Barbara, California, owns and operates um, low-income housing communities w with supportive services that are built in that we're going to talk about. And so Mavell is over the what goes on in those two properties at those community learning centers, and thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Um, w did you grow up here? I did not. Where did you grow up? No, I grew up all over down um, south, so. LA. In LA, yeah. Mainly San Pedro, so okay. LA area, Long Beach area. Um, we moved around a lot, so I lived in Torrance, Carson, Long Beach, and then ended up in San Pedro. Okay. Yeah. Tell me about your family. Uh, we're really close, so a lot of the family that I have here in California are all my mom's side. So we grew up really close. I have two sisters. One who's, I say my little sister, but she's 30. And then a younger sister who's six. So there's a huge gap. Wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're really tight knit and very loving and supportive family. Nice. And then UCSB brought you here. Yes. And did you go there for four years? I did. Yeah. And so how'd you, like, how'd you like it? I, I, I mean, there was definitely some up and downs with college, as I'm sure there is for everyone. But um, it was great. I love Santa Barbara. Um, I mean, I never left, so that's yeah. a testament to that. But um, it was really great. I got to really experience a lot with an organization that I, I was in. Um, but I loved it. I really did. And then out of, out of UCSB, mm -hmm. you've had an interesting um, career. Mm -hmm. And I was noticing just not just your jobs, but mm -hmm. you've been involved in a lot of things. It seems like yeah. you have a heart to give back. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it started, I would say, probably, I did a lot of volunteering when I was in uh, high school. So I volunteered with the YWCA, so tutoring and mentoring a lot of younger girls. Huh. Um, and then when I went on to UC Santa Barbara, I was part of Hermanas Unidas, which is an organization to support first-generation um, Latinas. And um, we did a lot of mentoring to other kids in around the area, so around the community. And I was the, um, the leader, the committee leader of Mentor, which we went to low income, underrepresented high schools around the LA area. We brought them to UCSB. They got to experience three days of what it is to be a college student uh -huh. in hopes of you know, getting them to really think about college and move forward, hopefully end up at a four year. Wow. Yeah. So, Who, how did you start volunteering in high school? Did you? Is that something your mom told you to do, or did um, you just think of it? No, I think I just really enjoyed it. I mean, I was I really love school, <laughs> so I felt like I needed to also then help others see, you know, what you could do if you have an education. Um, so I think it just stemmed from that, and I really had really good mentors growing up. So they were part of the YWCA, so I was really involved with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you went to work at Noah's Anchorage. Tell Correct. us about Noah's Anchorage here in yeah. town and what they do. Yeah, so I, they're part of the YMCA, so the Channel Islands YMCA, which a lot of people do not know about. Um, I actually worked at the Santa Barbara Y for four years, and that was during college and then after college. And I didn't even know about Noah's Anchorage or Youth and Family Services. So Noah's Anchorage is a shelter for youth who are either homeless, runaway, or they have just a hard time at home with their parents. It could range from maybe not going to school or just trauma mm -hmm. throughout their whole life. So it's a shelter for ages uh, 12 to 17, mm -hmm. and they provide a safe place for them to go, kind of provide a cool off, but it's also, in when I first started, we also had foster youth. 
and a lot of things happened in the past couple of years with legislations so we no longer have foster youth be a placement as I mean I, I'm not there anymore yeah. <laughs> but um, while I was there towards the end of you know my my place there it was we didn't have a foster youth placement but if they showed up because they ran away from a, a foster placement they could stay there Wow so they live mm -hmm. there yes How yeah. many? Um, we have eight so it's eight beds wow. um, and during the pandemic, they, we had to lower it to four, just for social distancing yeah. purposes. Um, but I think the longest stay that since I was there was two years. So a, a youth was there until he turned 18. Wow. Mm -hmm. that, that's amazing. Yeah, it's um, really great work. How long have they been doing that? So it's been 47 years. A long time. It, yeah, a long time. So they've been in the community um, prior to being part of the Channel Islands YMCA. So they were independent and it was called Climb Bottle. And I'm sure, I believe they went through a lot of, a lot of changes, um, but a lot of people in the past know, knows that as Climb Bottle. Wow. Mm -hmm. Are there opportunities, I, I was wondering about this, mm -hmm. to, to mentor or care for less mm -hmm. kids at Noah's Anchorage? I mean, yeah. is there, can, how can the community be if they if they, somebody was watching this mm -hmm. they said yeah I'd like to mm -hmm. do something for right yeah is um, that possible it's possible there's definitely volunteering opportunities um, with the foster youth there's a mentorship program that they get based on um, their case so they do have casas which is a court appointed right. special advocate um, but for other youth it's it's sometimes difficult because of confidentiality so uh. that plays a big role and I think um, but community can definitely get involved and they can give they can definitely give yeah, yeah they can definitely give um, and I know that in the past when I was there I would try to get a lot of donations because we also serve um, the older population so the homeless older population okay. um, the young adults I should say yeah so 18 to 24 Wow yeah that's fantastic mm -hmm. and you were there a while eight years eight years yeah Wow yeah and then you came to the Turner Foundation. I did. Which we're very thankful yeah. for. Yeah. And we're happy about. Um, talk, let's talk about kind of the vision for the community centers yeah. that, that exist there. I think it's right. uh, an incredible model that the Turner Foundation has set up mm -hmm. where, you know, two decent sized apartment communities, mm -hmm. we have community learning centers in the middle of them. Mm -hmm. So the kids, there's no transportation, there's right. no sign up, they just, it's there, it's free. Yeah. So tell us kind of what goes on there. Mm -hmm. uh, first, what goes on there in a regular year, mm -hmm. and then we can talk about mm -hmm. this year. Yeah. But talk about that. Yeah, so um, in a regular year, it's an after-school <laughs> program. So they're able to, and not just an after-school program, but it's really enrichment programs that they provide. So um, they go there after school. It's the kids, like you mentioned, that are, are there. Um, who live there so they can get music programs there's dance programs um, it's you know cooking programs so they can get all of that and also tutoring so they get support with school um, and then now we we were trying to figure out how um, to how to serve and what was the need and it seemed like when the centers closed down in March during the pandemic and how abrupt it was. Um, a lot of kids were not showing up to tutoring, maybe not necessarily because they didn't you know, want to, but it, it was hard for them. And whoever did show up, it was difficult. There's overcrowding in the apartments, maybe not a safe or a quiet space for them to do homework. So we figured, okay, we have time to figure this out and we are gonna, we're doing remote learning. So they're doing distance learning at their schools. So then we are providing a place for them to be able to really focus on school and also have staff around if they need support. But it's also, I, I think, helpful for the parents because a lot of the parents either do not know the technology or have to go to work or have younger kids that they need to kind of focus on. So it's really, overall for everyone that's the whole so, so, the, so and I know so it's like up to 30 or around there Correct. that can that can fit socially mm -hmm. distanced right but at both properties mm -hmm. kids who live in on the in these west side neighborhoods right. at those properties can come yeah. free mm -hmm. there's it's staffed it's, and they yeah. can they can have an opportunity to, to learn that yeah exactly that's yeah. fantastic you know that I, I know that over the years mm -hmm. one of the things that I think has been unique and great about 
the, the what happens at the Turner Foundation properties mm -hmm. is there's a relationship between the staff and the teachers yes. or the principals even yeah. at the schools. Yeah. Is that something that you're going to continue? Is yeah. that something that is exciting to you? Yeah, no, definitely. That's probably what's most exciting. I think growing up, both my parents didn't speak English, so I had to do a lot of the translating. And I, and for me, I like I mentioned, I love. I love school. Um, so I understand the need for an advocate, the need for that person to provide support and also bridge that communication between the teachers and the parents. Um, so I actually attended two back to school nights virtually on Zoom. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. So I was, I actually saw one of the parents there and then I was able to, to kind of chime in and talk with the teachers and ask questions. So I am emailing all teachers. I'm also going to be meeting with the parents in two weeks to see how we can support. They have parent conferences coming up. So I want to be as involved and have the community center and the staff be as involved with the kids because, um, you know, it's this distance learning is something new for everyone yeah. and we want to make sure that our kids succeed. That's so great. Mm -hmm. do, they, do the principals or teachers wonder who you are? Um, I think the do first, they, I mean, do they ask? the like, teacher asked <laughs> who I was yeah. um, and then I explained and luckily I believe that we have a really good relationship with the teachers and that relationship is built throughout the years. So as soon as I said, you know, with the Turner Foundation, oh, okay, I know who you are. Okay. So it's, it's great. How do the family, I mean, you've, you've only been at the Turner Foundation a relatively short time, right. but how, how, in your experience so mm -hmm. far, how, how do the families... Mm -hmm who live there, whose mm -hmm. kids are involved, mm -hmm. uh, react to the to what's going on. Yeah. I mean, what's it, how, what's the dynamic like? Yeah. Um, when I met with the parents um, before programming started to see, you know, what is the need? Do you need our support? A lot of the parents said, even if you just help us one day, that would be really helpful. Really? This is so stressful. I want to support as much as I can. I had a mom tell me, you know, I don't know if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing because I right. don't read English and I'm just assuming that they know what they're doing. So I think it, it just shows how much disconnect there is, but also that they do need our support right. and, and that need is there. It's so good. Mm -hmm. What's it like to like school? <laughs> I haven't um, had that experience. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I, you've always just liked it. I've always liked it. I mean, I had a conversation, um, with Donnie not too long ago where I'm getting my master's per, I mean, my master's degree. You're still in school. I'm still in school. So I really enjoy it. Um, what are you, you're in your master's in what? In master's in business. Business. So I'm getting my business MBA. administration. Yes. Yes. Wow. I'll I didn't be, know that. Yeah. I'll be done in December. Um, and I think the teacher, our, our teacher, our professor said, you know, this is your last semester. You guys, what do you guys feel? And I thought, I don't want it to end. <laughs> um, and then I immediately started looking at PhD programs. Is that right? Yes. You uh, want to keep going? I want to keep going. Maybe once it's over, I'll have a break and change my mind. But I took a long break between my BA and my master's. So I don't, I don't think that I'll stop. Now you, as a Turner Foundation, you work... Um, with the director of programs, Donnie Feller. Correct. How's that working out? It's great. I've heard kind of mixed reviews. <laughs> it's great, actually. No, Donnie's, Donnie's really great. I, I have not, I mean, I've had really great supervisors and I've been at, you know, jobs for long periods of time. So I've been really, you know, really been able to, to work with them. Yeah. Um, but I think Donnie just, He's really great. You think he, he's a keeper? He's a keeper. Okay, good. He helps you, and he and I think the way that he appreciates the staff is amazing. Right. Yeah. Okay, good. See, this is good. Yeah. We have that on film. <laughs> um, we need to talk before we have a couple minutes left, but yeah. we need to talk a little bit about the Dodgers. Oh, yes. So you have a son. I do. And I've seen on your Facebook page that mm -hmm. the Dodgers are a big part of your heart and life. Yeah. Like mine. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this is going to be, ta th we're taping this right now mm -hmm. here in September, mm -hmm. but it's not going to be airing until later. Okay. After the baseball season is over. Over. Okay. So we're going to get this on record. Yes, we are. Is this the year for this, the Dodgers to win the championship? This has to be the year. Are you predicting that? I am predicting that. Are you predicting that? Yeah. Perfect. So then let's agree. Okay. Okay. So we're on camera mm -hmm. saying mm -hmm. 
2020 is the year that the Dodgers the are going to win it all. I believe that. Okay, I hope that's true. Yeah, we me don't too. know. We don't know. This is on. Some, this will be on sometime. They'll, they'll either think we're geniuses. They will. Or heartbroken. Or one again. or the other. Yeah. It's like okay, this time now. <laughs> Lavelle, it's yeah. great to have you. Thank Thanks you. for all you've done for the community over yeah. the years and for the Turner Foundation. And mm -hmm. if people want to get involved, mm -hmm. organizations want to get involved mm -hmm. with the Turner Foundation, yes. how would they do that? Um, they could reach out. So if they want to, um, the website the is, website has, I believe, all the emails and the so contacts. So the Turner the TurnerFoundation.com mm -hmm. is the website, mm -hmm. and you know if somebody wants to volunteer, Volunt donate, yeah, donate any. Yeah, because I know, for example, the music program. Right. I mean, the companies that, and the organizations that have come alongside Santa Barbara Bowl Foundation, mm -hmm. DW Drums, Sonos. Mm -hmm. Santa Barbara Arts mm -hmm. and Culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing the, yeah. the people that have come alongside come, to provide right. music. Right. And so I wanted to get that out there that if there's other people other or other areas, areas of right. interest, uh, people can do that. Yes, definitely. Wonderful. Okay. Thanks for coming. Thank you. And we'll see you next time.